Hey guys, um, if you clicked on this video, uh, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons of owning a plane like the Challenger 2. Uh, I'm gonna start with cons and then I'm gonna go to pros because I wanna leave a good taste in your mouth about the airplanes. Um, this includes, you know, the Challenger 2 and then also the Challenger 1, which is back there, and also just any airplane that would be considered LSA um, or Fat Ultralight or you know, any airplane that's not a Cessna or something like that. There's a lot of hesitation for pilots to buy these type of aircraft. And I found that uh, with my channel, it seems to be that people want to know uh, more of that type of stuff. They seem to enjoy this knowledge, <clears throat> the stuff knowledge about this type of aircraft. So I'm not a CFI. I don't, uh, you know, whatever I say is purely my opinion. A lot of people might watch this and, and see the five things. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I have five things that I have written down that in my mind were my hesitations and my concerns. But, and so I'm gonna tell you the cons of those things and I'm gonna tell you the pros of those things again. So I'm um, here at the airport today. It's a beautiful day. I'm finally cooling down instead of being, you know, 105 uh, we're gonna get the plane out and start flying now that it's gonna be well oddly enough it's gonna be the 90s and that feels like a real win because it has been so hot here like blistering hot and actually we haven't had rain in uh, quite a while you can see our grass is dying um, and uh, me and the boys are actually the ones who cut the airport so uh, we want it to rain we want to cut before I get started on the pros and cons for you who watch because of the stuff that, that I do with the airplanes and, and whatnot. Here's the Challenger 1. Um, this is the Challenger 1 that is on the face group, Facebook group photo where the motorcycle is sitting over there. Um, this is not a, uh, this one doesn't require a pilot's license anymore. But this one, you know, the motorcycle sitting here, and there's a picture of it. It doesn't have the wheel pants on it and stuff. And sorry, it's a little dark back here, but this one has the 447. Um, full disclosure, I did crow hop this airplane after we put it back together. Um, I want to make a video about flying it. So I haven't actually flown it, but I have crow hopped it. Um, there's a lot of debate over crow hop. I don't want to get into that right now, but the moral of the story is if you're going to crow hop an airplane, make sure you have enough. Sorry, I have sinuses, guys or people, but uh, make sure you have enough runway to get out of ground effect. You wanna get up, get your nose down, get into flight, and then re-enter ground effect. That's my personal opinion. Again, I'm not a CFI, that's just how I do it. So I don't wanna hear about, actually go ahead and complain about it. I don't even care at this point, I think it's funny. Um, uh, opinions in this world, uh, we all have them and uh, it's it's okay. We're allowed to. I'm allowed to have my opinions on how things work, and you're allowed to have your opinion on how things work. But if you want to leave a comment and tell me um, what your opinion is, that's fine. Just try to be tasteful with it. And actually, it really does help when you guys leave comments or share and like and all that stuff. It helps me um, get to the algorithm to where maybe more people see these videos. Um, I would like to be... Ah, I hate saying um. I'm trying to eliminate that out of my vocabulary. So I'm trying to be a person who's a positive uh, influencer when it comes to purchasing these aircraft. Because when I purchased the Challenger, I found that it was an airplane that people oftentimes purchased and then never flew. For example, this Challenger 1. This was purchased by a guy and it sat and he never flew it. And, you know, he had all these stickers on it and had his name on the fuselage and had all that stuff, but yet he never flew it. Uh, probably for health reasons or something, I don't really know. But I find that Challenger seems to be the most turnover rate. Since I've had this Challenger, I've seen two or three other Challengers get sold, and then they get transported, and then they're for sale again. Uh, so I want to try to eliminate that. I think that they have a bad rap, and I think that if people have more knowledge before they go into it, then maybe they'll be more successful with their purchase. Um, and that's why, you know, I'm making this video, the, pro, the pros and the cons. And actually, I want to label it the cons and the pros, like I said, because I want to leave you guys with a positive uh, feeling of the aircraft, you know. If you're looking to purchase, and I'm not just talking for the record, this isn't even just Challenger. This is, you know, Kolb, uh, Flightstar, 
uh, Quicksilver, any of these airplanes that are now considered airplanes because they're too heavy, um, you know, have more than a five gallon tank and weigh more than 254 pounds, um, have a bigger engine. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. So is, is mine a challenger? Yes. But is what I'm talking about this part of aviation in general, pretty much in my opinion, I, uh, I think they all kind of classify and they have people, people have the same fears of these airplanes. And I get it because even though I literally grew up in a Quicksilver, even I was hesitant when, when deciding to purchase a challenger. And funny story, uh, when I purchased my Challenger, it was in Bravo Airspace uh, down in Houston. Um, I know Ken's watching. What's up, buddy? I love the guy. The guy I bought this from, great guy. Uh, but uh, the, the moral of the story is I was very hesitant of flying the plane. And my buddy Ray, the one who has a Kit Fox in the last hangar, um, he was like, hey, I just got my tailwheel endorsement. Uh, I'll do it. And not that you need a tailwheel endorsement for this. Um, the caveat to that is everybody always says um, they they treat this like a tailwheel because it's very stick and rudder. Um, and also, he I had this false idea that because he was lighter, you know, we could put like the tanks of gas in there and then he could get back. And he had a really rough time. I mean, obviously, he's a great aviator, so he got it back. But... There was a huge crosswind and anybody who knows anything about the challenger knows that the challenger just flies sideways so he flew it back for me i was very hesitant in the first like 10 or 15 hours i flew this plane i just flew it in the pattern as you probably know if you've watched this channel long enough because that's when i started making the videos of this airplane uh so don't be scared you know looking back on it now i think it's ridiculous looking back on it now now i know that a heavier person would have actually made the plane fly better uh because it was really nose light and all these things. So lesson learned. Um, I would definitely do it differently now. I obviously, I, I would love to, if somebody has a hesitation, say you're in Texas and you're hesitant of buying a, a plane because you don't want to fly it back or whatever, or Louisiana or something like that, let me know. Uh, you can't pay me obviously because I'm not a commercial rated pilot yet, but, uh, but you know, I will definitely help you out. Uh, I want you to, um, have the airplane and get used to the airplane. If you can get it to your airport and you can start crow hopping it, then it's going to give you confidence to, you know, uh, start flying these airplanes. So long story short, don't be scared of it. Uh, even I was, and I, I literally, I've literally flown in Quicksilvers and stuff, which are like, in my opinion, even scarier to the, to the person without a lot of knowledge because a Quicksilver is, I'll put one on the, on the screen right now. But a Quicksilver is just a, an airplane that is, you know, side by side, not tandem, which actually I do wish I had something like that, but, uh, and it is open, you know, your feet are dangling if you want them to, if you take them off the rudders, they're literally dangling in the world, you know, uh, very open metal or aluminum, you know, piping type frames. I see a lot of them have 582s and stuff. They're a great airplane, by the way. I mean, I'd love to have one, but, um, but I have a Challenger and I love my Challenger and I'll probably always have a Challenger. Uh, it's great. You know, they're just a fun time. So all that being said, let's get into the five. This isn't the top five, but I have five cons and pros. All right, so um, con five. If you buy an airplane like this, you must have your faith, not also in your Lord, but you must have your faith in nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts are what put, make this airplane uh, stay together. They're very important in your pre-flight. Anything you do literally has to do with nuts and bolts. Uh, excuse me, this is unique because when you're flying an aircraft like a Cessna or a uh, uh, Cherokee, when you pre-flight those airplanes, um, you don't have to put as much emphasis on things like nuts and bolts. You are looking at control surfaces, you're looking at things like that. Uh, so one of the hesitations about buying an airplane like this, sorry, I always have to touch the back of the screen so I can see that what the screen is seeing is your, the hesitation is that everything is a nut and bolt in an airplane like this. Um, obviously it was built in a garage too, you know, like probably a hangar, but you know, somebody built this, um, on their own, not a factory factory built, you know, 50% of it, but they've built the other 50% or 51%. 
So you have to be willing to pre-flight really good on an airplane like this. But I, I mean, I literally am just walking around checking nuts and bolts, the tightness. There's nuts and bolts here, uh, checking all of them. Just everything you can think of, you know, this is all these nuts, bolts, the uh, elevator, everything. Just everything is a nut and a bolt in this airplane. So let me get to the pro of that because again, everything, there's pros and cons to both of them. Um, the pro is that when I go and fly an airplane like a Cessna or a Cherokee now, I pre-flight like a boss. Like, number one, it's so easy, but I feel like I look at things now differently than I did when I wasn't pre-flighting a Challenger, if that makes any sense. So the pro, the con is nuts and bolts. The pro is your ability to quality pre-flight. It's gonna make you a better pre-flighter to have a plane like this. We all know pilots who don't pre-flight and I'm not, I don't judge them, they're all great pilots usually, uh, but you never know what your airplane, what has happened to it in the last flight or what somebody did to it while I was sitting at the airport or uh, some person who just got hired on at the airport maybe ran something into a control surface or something, you don't know. So. A pre-flight, like my plane is, granted, you know, this is the the Challenger um, and not like a Cessna. The pre-flight is, you know, a good, you know, five or five to ten minute long thing because of all the nuts and bolts where, uh, where at a regular plane, you know, you can do it fairly quickly and be fairly thorough. Um, but, you know, the moral of the story is it makes you a better pre-flight person. That was number five. Now, number four. Okay, number four. Number four is the cons. This airplane, even though it looks like a fighter jet, this thing is slow as hell. This is a very slow airplane. I don't have the, uh, you know, the strut fairings. I don't have the, the wheel fairing. I don't have any of that stuff. This, and I don't have doors, which I don't want doors, but this is uh, the slowest plane you will fly probably. Uh, even the Challenger 1, just in my crow hops, I can tell you that that airplane is faster than this airplane. Uh, it, does have, it does have the fairing covers and stuff like that. But So that is the con. A con is if you want to go somewhere fast, uh, you, you, this is not the airplane for you. Now, this airplane can be made 10, 15 miles an hour faster, faster, and I might do that at some point in time. But right now, it's not my priority. I don't need to go fast. I'm not going anywhere far away. In a, you know, an hour, maybe two hours away is about it for now. The con or the pro to that, the pro to that is guys, you can log, this has a tail number. This is a registered aircraft. You can log time in this. So this airplane's using like, let's say four gallons an hour. Uh, you might not be going super fast, but you're logging that time. You gotta have 1500 hours for your ATP. You can buy this airplane and log time in it. Um, you cannot, log instrument time uh, and obviously night would be difficult I, I don't know the rules on that so i don't want to speculate or get into it um, but you can't you can't obviously do any instruments in it considering it's obviously a vfr machine if you guys can see i don't know if you get uh, the light but it's a vfr machine so but you can put those hours in your logbook with this airplane uh i know lots of people do if you're willing to you know and it's cheaper it's so much cheaper you know you're talking four gallons an hour um, it's just a good way to build time in your logbook. So the con is it's very slow, but the pro is that if you just want to log time, that's perfect. Also, um, I remember my dad told me one time, my dad watches these videos too. And obviously he used to be a very, just all he did was these airplanes growing up. My dad taught me a lot about flying and was a big reason that I'm in aviation. And obviously he had an emphasis on safety and emergency procedures and things like that. So, um, but I remember one time, I don't know if you remember telling me this, but we were going to do something. I think we were flying somewhere in a Quicksilver in North Carolina. And my dad, I, I just had sh said something about my concerns uh, about getting into an issue with the airplane. And he looked at me, he had a cigarette in his mouth and he's like, it's pretty hard to kill yourself at 35 miles an hour. And so that, whether he remembers that or not, I don't know, but I remember it like it was yesterday because as a child, I was like, 
35 miles an hour. And then I, I remember watching the Olympics and seeing how fast people ran to kind of get an idea when I was a little kid, you know. So anyway, so it's hard to kill yourself at 35 miles an hour. Is it possible? Of course, but, you know, not very likely. Let me see what number three is. I have a list on my phone. Sorry. I wanted to make sure I did quality work for you guys. Number three. Anyway, I see myself. Number three. The cons of uh, a plane like this ugh, is right here. So, and, and, and again, not everybody's going to look at this as a con, but this is a two-stroke engine. You must put oil in your fuel. I use Dominator, uh, AMS oil, um, but you have to put, you know, two-stroke in your fuel. It, it, the con is that, you know, it's very small. It only has like 50 horsepower. Uh, it is two stroke, so it's loud. It's very high RPMs. That is that is a con. Um, there are some uh, four stroke options out there, but they're very heavy. I think if this one ever gets something like that, then I will convert it to a one seater with a storage for traveling. But I probably wouldn't do that until after my, if my kids get their license, then I wanna be able to fly with them uh first and then after you know once they're gone or whatever then i don't have anybody to put back there anyway so i'll just make it a storage area maybe put a bigger engine on it the pro because we got to have the pros to the cons yeah it sucks that you know you're doing two stroke you feel like you're going to mow your lawn every time you uh go to fly your plane right the pro is that this engine costs about two thousand dollars to completely rebuild you can't even do an annual on an airplane anymore for $2,000. Um, so the pro is definitely that these things are far, because they're not certified parts, this is an experimental, these things are far cheaper than they would be uh, in an airplane, uh, in a like a certified air, well, I mean, I don't like these words certified, but uh this is an actual airplane just registered experimental so i can you know so it doesn't have to have an annual this gets a once a year condition report or whatever which is far cheaper than an annual you know you can get that done for like 150 dollars, and then whatever if you don't pass it then you know you can just do the work yourself like for example say the the amp says you know what you got to replace this belt and you got to tighten this up and do this and that well, that's something you can do yourself and then call him back and say, hey, I got it done and he'll come check it out and sign you off. Uh, in an airplane, you have to have a, a pay an AMP to do it. So con, two stroke, pro, they don't cost nothing. And you know, they are pretty reliable, knock on wood. Obviously you guys have probably seen the video where I lost this engine, but it was, uh, it was our fault. I say our fault, but my fault. Anyways, you live, you learn. Okay, so number two, I kind of overlooked this a little bit, but I was just talking about it, is the fact that, you know, you do have to, because this is not an ultralight, you do have to once a year get an inspection on it. Um, the pro to that is that it's not an annual. Uh, I kind of covered it already, so I hate to backtrack on that, but that was my number two. So I kind of segued from three to two uh, on accident. So let's get into number one. Number one is going to be, I hate saying this word because I never say it right, controversial. I think that's it. Um, probably not a hard word for most people to say. I don't know. There are some words. Get over it. So I personally feel, and this is my personal opinion, which I'm entitled to, America, last time I checked, for now. I feel that this airplane is harder to fly than other planes. I've, I've been fortunate in my life that I have been able to sit in a lot of aircraft um, and out of all of, and, and, and fly a lot of aircraft, um, all the way from a caravan, um, you know, uh, all the way down to Quicksilver or Challenger or whatever. The, the Challenger is hard to fly. I am not going to lie to you. I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's going to be all, you know, daisies. And, um, and it, it, it's not difficult in, in a sense that it's physically hard to do. It's hard to fly in that you have to build trust with the airplane. This airplane doesn't always do what you ask it to do right away. So you have to be patient, you know, um, tailwind. If you are doing anything in the pattern in a tailwind and say the tailwind is 10, 15, 20, you're not going to have a lot of authority in the, with the aircraft. 
Um, you have to build that trust that you know eventually the plane's going to do what you want it to do. It's going to make that correction. And I think that that causes a little bit of panic for some people. And I completely get it. It did me too. I remember the first time I wanted to fly with a 15 knot crosswind. It was 15 gusts of 20 down in Jacksonville. And I got in my downwind leg and I didn't, hadn't gained a ton of altitude, but I was like, you know, okay, not too big of a deal. But man, when I turned into that and I realized I couldn't climb and I had no, no yaw authority, it really messed me up. All right, I took a quick break there. The owner just pulled up and I didn't want him to, I'm sure he watches this already, he knows. I just didn't want to be like sitting here doing this while he was sitting there and going, hey, uh, what's going on? Uh, so I'm back. Again, it is not difficult to fly this aircraft. It is, it's, a, it's work, it's stick and rudder. And you have to make, uh, if you watch any of my other videos and you watch the landing portion of the video, it's a lot of hand movement, it's a lot of feet movement. You have to make instant uh, uh, adjustments all the time with this airplane. So definitely keep that in mind. But don't let it, but here's the pro. Okay, that was the con. Uh, and again, people are gonna, these guys who've been flying these things their whole life, trust me, I know that I can name off all these people I know, listen, I know, and I respect all of you guys. I'm not saying this plane's hard to fly. Listen, when you're up there, it's, it's, it's smooth and you can trim it out and I get all that. What I'm saying is compared to a Cessna or a Cherokee, this one requires more work. When I get in a Cessna or something now or the Cherokee, it's like laughable to me. I'm like, wow, why did, like, there are times that you land, you don't even like, you just, you just ride it out and in this plane you can't ride anything out you have to make constant you know i mean literally here's a here, the stick the whole time you're landing you know the stick i mean you're like you're doing all this number this number, and then you flare and flare it into it so that's what i mean by hard um don't let it deter you from from you know getting one but just know that you're going to have to adjust your flight if you're a cessna pilot sorry i keep going with my nose i'm sinus up if you're like a pilot and you had a Cessna, you did all your training in a Cessna um, and you're like, hey, I'm going to buy this plane. Yeah, this is going to be a great plane for you to, to get, to build time with and all that stuff. But you have to have transition training. Um, I didn't do any transition training. I just kind of figured all the Quicksilver time because it does fly a lot like the Quicksilver. Um, so I kind of just assumed that would be, you know, sufficient. If I could go back... I don't really think it quite was, but now obviously I'm fine and, and I feel like I feel like I'm a, a top challenger pilot. I'm sure people roll their eyes at that, but I, I know I can do anything with this plane. I can handle it. I can land it anywhere. I can do anything with this plane now. So the pro to that is just the same as the uh, pre-flight. When I go to fly other planes, it's like what now obviously other planes you know you're going into different airspace and stuff like that so it requires a little more radio work but the actual flying process is so simple in a regular plane you know you can just trim it out the plane will fly itself you know you take off you land you know this airplane you're pretty much hands-on 24 7 so again the pros are the cons that you have to learn kind of a different way of flying um, the yaw is an issue with these planes, adverse yaw. You have to use ailerons with your turns. You, you can't, you just can't. Uh, you can use your rudder in straight flight to, you know, uh, coordinate your flight, but you're going to have to use your ailerons for everything else. If you don't, you're just wasting your own time. You're just going to, the plane will just, just fly in a crab. Um, so that's what I mean by uh, hard to fly. And, you know, I hesitated putting that on there, but to me, as I'm trying to look at this as a consumer, as somebody who's watching this video saying, hey, I want to buy an airplane like that. And I was in your, your shoes too. Only difference is I came into it with a lot of sketchy uh, airplane time where somebody might be coming into it straight off of you know uh, a Cessna. And I just want you to know that yes, it's gonna be some work, but yes, you're gonna love it and it's very rewarding in the long run. Um, so, I hope that this video benefited you. Uh, I'm going to be making a lot more content uh, about this type of stuff. So if you liked this, please subscribe. Um, if you could leave a comment, I'd appreciate it. If you like this type of content, make sure you go over to like uh, 
the cotton patch, which is Jason, my good buddy. I talk to daily. Um, the main pilot, the guy, I love the, I love his airplane too. Uh, he doesn't have a challenger. He has, I believe a flight star or phantom, uh, and Matt, which obviously he's like the number one guy in this world. Uh, so any of those videos, they're kind of like this one. You learn stuff from, from them too. Uh, you can see if you want to see more Challenger flight and my videos aren't enough for you, then 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 maybe go over to the Cotton Patch and watch Jason's videos. Uh, he's just getting his license, but he's a really good Challenger pilot. So I think his is a situation to where he's actually just learning in that plane. So that's going to be his baseline for flying. And that's another thing, too. Some of these people that I've talked to about this airplanes, they've only flown these airplanes, you know, back when they were considered fat ultralights or whatever. And so they're not really familiar, some of them, not all of them. I'm sure you're watching this and you're like, no, you don't know me. And that's fine. I guess I don't know you. But if you don't have a lot of time in, in GA aircraft, like 172s or something like that, and if you learn in this, then this is what you learn in. It's what you know. Um, but you can't go from this to a Cessna because it's completely different, you know. Uh, and that's hard to explain. And I'm trying to sit here and explain it to you guys. And I'm realizing that I'm just probably, uh, it's a lost cause. If you are going to, if you're watching this video to try to make a decision on buying a plane like this um, or even a, a version of that with a bigger engine and a certified, you know, a tail number, do it. You should definitely do it. And when you get it, don't let it scare you. Learn how to fly it. Learn how to learn how to treat it and love it and, and make it yours. I'm so tired of seeing Challengers for sale. Um, it's just not, listen, they're great airplanes. There's no reason to sell them. There really isn't. Unless you're just like, you want to be side by side. So you want to get a Quicksilver or something. I would actually like to have a side by side airplane too, like a flight star or something. Uh, just so that like when my kids are with me, I can like look at them and talk to them and stuff, you know, obviously I know they're not going to fall out back there, but, uh, I'm always like my, like justice, my younger son, when he's back there, I mean, I, listen, I, I know nothing's going to happen, but, uh, his, his, their feet are up here. So I'll find myself like just always looking at his feet to make sure like, I know he didn't go anywhere. Hell, it'd be, if you wanted to jump out of this plane, it would be hard, okay? Uh, it'd be very difficult. So, but you know, I, it's just one of those things I have as a dad, I guess. So backtracking, if you like this video, please like, please comment, please, please, please. Just go in the comments and put a thing. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway thing real soon too, actually, it's gonna be cool. I think you guys are really gonna like it. So please subscribe, please like, please comment. And also in the comments, you can put what you wanna see from me from this airplane. I can, if you're, if you're thinking about buying a Challenger and there's something that you're hesitant uh, about, put it in the comments, I'll make a whole video about it, whatever it is addressing it. Um, again, I'm not a CFI. So it's just my opinion. Thanks guys, please subscribe.